my name is Grace, and I guess you could say I've been really active physically my whole life. Um, and even though I've sometimes had, you know, injuries and illnesses, broken bones and things like that, I've always been really resilient and I've healed and I've always been able to get back into doing everything I wanted to do without any issues. But with the fibroids, it was different because it was such, it was a problem that knocked me down and it didn't go away on its own. Mm-hmm. And it, um, it basically took away two years of my life where um, I, I could no longer be the active person that I'm used to being. Like it would hurt to run. I had to be careful which exercises I did. Mm-hmm. I guess that would have to be um, 2022. No way of knowing how long they had been there. And um, knowing what I have seen now, it, it's very likely, I would say, that what they saw in the ultrasound was probably far less than what was actually in there. I was experiencing symptoms that are associated with fibroids, um, although I did not realize it at the time. Um, I unfortunately did not have health insurance, so I didn't have a doctor. I didn't have anyone to go see. Um, I would say the catalyst for me going in there uh, to be seen, I went to the emergency room, was was my first um, interaction with medical professionals um, in this whole fibroid ordeal. That was because basically I had an IUD copper T implanted about six months prior. Um, I had it done at you know the Planned Parenthood clinic. I think it was free for me because I was such a low income person at the time. Um, they they didn't really examine me or anything, uh, you know, and they say that copper T's, IUDs, they, they make fibroids worse and ovarian cysts worse, or they can cause those things. Um, all of that was so foreign to me. I didn't think anything of it. I, I just needed birth control. I didn't want the hormonal stuff because it made me so tired. I was working three jobs and I couldn't be tired. Um, so I, I thought that was the best route. They didn't check me or anything. They just put it in. And of course, everything hurt after that. Um, sex was very painful after that. Um, and so I thought that the painful sex was just due to the, the IUD. But about six months later, it was just hurting so, so, so bad. I ended up going to the emergency room because I was all bent over. It hurt to walk. And I thought I was injured uh, because I have a long-term boyfriend who just really likes to have a lot of sex a lot all the time. Um, And that had become hell for me. I didn't want anything to do with that. I didn't want anything inside of me. Everything hurts so much. Um, So I went to the ER because I thought I was hurt, really hurt. And they just did an ultrasound and they found and they're like, oh, you have a fibroid and an ovarian cyst, but they're they're small, um, but you need to just go see a specialist because there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and so I had to, they just gave me a phone number of like OBGYNs and I had to call and make that appointment myself. Um, and that I had to wait like six weeks to even be seen by somebody. And they checked me, they found the same thing that the ER had found um, on the ultrasound. And they said the same thing. They said, they're still small. So there's nothing that you need to do. Um, If it still hurts later, come back. And they sent me home with nothing but a big bill and no treatment at all. And so I was like, I guess I just have to like grit my teeth and bear this. Then there's nothing to be done. And so two years later, I ended up having to get surgery to remove the fibroids with Dr. McCool. And they took out the fibroid that was the size of a mango. That was a large one. And um, a bunch of other smaller ones. I don't know if he said a dozen or dozens. Um, that doesn't even matter. Um, the ovarian cyst had grown so big that it had burst open and it was bleeding into my abdomen. And then it bled out by itself by that point. Um, but the, the whole two years, it was horrible. I avoided solid food because eating hurt so much. Um, hmm. I would say that it, it kind of, it finally hit just a breaking point um, earlier this year, mm. earlier this year, it was like February, I think when finally like the bulge was so big, it was getting hard to hide. And I just knew I was like, there's something growing in me. Um, and I need to, I need to do something. Now I have health insurance also, thank right. God. Um, I have a different job that has health insurance. And so, um, I made an appointment with, and with my doctor who referred me to an OBGYN. Uh, first of all, my doctor told me like he pressed on my abdomen and stuff. And he's like, there's nothing wrong with you. And I was like, I'm here because there's something wrong with me. Please give me a referral to to someone. To, I don't know. And, and he wanted to send me home, but he ended up just giving me the referrals just to get me to be quiet and get rid of me, I guess. <laughs> and so I 
I went to some an OBGYN who I'd never been to before and also got an abdominal ultrasound and a pelvic ultrasound. And that's when they confirmed the fibroids were definitely there. Um, and that OBGYN just said, he was horrible, by the way. He was like, we have to tear out your, your uterus. You need a hysterectomy. And he just wouldn't listen to anything at all. He was basically like, he already knew what he was going to say before I even walked in. And he was just going down the, the checklist. Um, he's like, you have these symptoms. And he just pressed on my abdomen. He stuck his finger inside of me, pressed on my abdomen and said, yep, there it is. Oh, that's a big one. We're going to have to take out your whole uterus. Hysterectomy. Don't worry. I do a hysterectomy every week for the past 15 years or however long it was. And I just looked at him and I was like, there's really no other option. I don't want my uterus to get taken out. And it seemed like he was interested in making money off of that procedure. Like that, that was just kind of an easy paycheck for him was the vibe that I got. He wouldn't listen to me at all. And, and I left and I just, I accepted what he said. Um, he was the, he was the authoritative figure on the matter, you know, and I left and I was just crying and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have a hysterectomy. I was so sad about it. But then, um, someone I knew at work, my supervisor, cause I requested, I was like, just a heads up, I'm going to need time off for this at some point. And she's like, wait a second, what's going on? They want to do what to you? Why? <laughs> they could just take it out with a laparoscopy, you know? And I was like, there has to be another way. And my supervisor told me that they could just take out only the bad stuff and leave your organs intact. And I was like, right. why didn't anyone say this? It's it's horrible that they don't say it, that it's an option. That's what I did. Um, I ended up finding another OBGYN who thankfully at least listened to me and seemed to care. Completely different vibe than the first OBGYN. Um, but he said that I would have to have an open procedure. He's like, I can take the five words without taking the rest of the uterus and everything. But um, you have to have an open procedure. It'll be a huge deal. Two days in the hospital, all this really long recovery. And I was like, oh man, like that's not a laparoscopy <laughs> and right. with the short recovery. And I was like, thank you so much for listening and being nice, but I have to keep looking. And so that's when I Googled, I was um, Googling a lot. And that's when I found TIGC. Gosh. I'm terrible about asking questions when I'm supposed to be like, usually I just, I listen a lot and then they'll be like, you have any questions? And I'll be like, no. And then after we hang up, I'll think of something. Um, no, but he was really informative. So it wasn't a problem. Um, my first impression honestly was the fact that he, we had a scheduled call, right. For a consultation. And he called me from a transport van. I think he was supposed to be, or like had planned to be uh, calling me from his his office you know or someplace obviously stable but he called me from a transport van because he was having car trouble no. and he's like I'm so sorry it's kind of loud and he explained the situation briefly to me and I was like wow he could have canceled our call like he's kind of in a distressful situation right now but he called me anyway and he was really nice and just warm and helpful even though he was in that situation and it meant a lot to me well, going into the surgery itself, I'd say my main concern was paying for it mm -hmm. because I have health insurance now. Um, but I had been informed that um, that facility in, in Rockville, Maryland is actually out of network for me. But they assured me that um, they would get rid of most of the bill somehow. And and so I was like, OK, I really, really hope that that's actually accurate. <laughs> um, after the surgery, that the swelling was just like, OK, so immediately after the surgery, it was like, wow, I feel like I just had a baby. Like my stomach was all like smaller and everything. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm going back to normal. And then the swelling hit because, you know, your body just freaks out a week later. And then it's like, wow, my stomach is like flat. Like it was before the tumors. I think I'm about three weeks post recovery and I'm great. I would say um, there's like, I still can't do everything, but I've been, I've been able to do a lot I've been able to lift up things I need to lift up. I'm not doing any like major weightlifting. Um, I'm not going for runs yet, but I'm sure I'll be able to start that soon. Um, I spontaneously had to run unplanned to to catch the neighbor's dog that escaped and was about to attack a cat. And so like, yeah. to save the cat's life, I had to, I was like, I don't want to tear my stitches, but this cat's about to get torn apart. Like, I need to run for this. Like, yeah. what's more important? And so I ran, and it didn't even hurt at all. And I was like, wow. And the cat also got saved. Um. Okay, so I'm going to tackle this um, on two different fronts. First of all, first of all, if you're not being heard, um, take care of yourself in the meantime, because this could be a long uphill battle. Um, so uh, avoid IUDs 
and and avoid sexual activity, I would say both of those things probably made everything way worse. Um, in the meantime, to keep it from growing so fast. Two, if you're not being taken seriously by your healthcare professionals, go doctor shopping. Just keep looking until you find someone who cares and who's actually interested in doing their job and not just interested in getting paid to not do anything because um, there are people, there's still doctors who care and didn't go into the profession just to make money, even though it seems more and more these days, like most of them did, but there is still some good ones left. You just have to find them and definitely try to make sure you find someone in network. <laughs> like, I don't know, ask, ask beforehand. Um, but I guess at this point, I still have no regrets either. Well, I'm already enjoying eating solid foods again. And I'm really looking forward to running again and being able to work out hard like I used to. And, um, and being able to defend myself, not being so like vulnerable and, and weak and fragile. Like, oh, I'm always on the defensive because I had to protect myself like a pregnant woman, basically. Like, that's what I felt like. Like, if anyone just punches me in the stomach, I'm really down, you know? Um, I'm looking forward to not feeling like that anymore.